being said, today we're talking about partnering with public libraries to offer physical activity programs for older adults. Um, and just a quick roadmap of what we'll cover, uh, we'll start with why libraries uh, support healthy aging um, and why that uh, activity is changing and, and expanding um, into even physical activity promotion. Uh, I'll then do a brief uh, literature review of some previous work on this topic. Um, before going into the study that we did, um, what we found, uh, and then end by outlining some partnership opportunities for any entity interested in increasing um, physical um, health among older adults by, by partnering with public libraries. Uh, and I'm hoping we'll have plenty of time at the end for a lively question and answer and discussion. So I look forward again to your, your thoughts and feedback. Uh, so just a quick introduction to why libraries. Um, uh, the first and most obvious reason is that they're everywhere. Um, the ubiquitous social institutions uh, and actually their numbers are increasing. Uh, so between uh, the, the last two public library censuses, their numbers actually increased from around 16,700 to most recently around 17,500. Um, and uh, people don't actually realize, but we're actually in the midst of one of the largest construction booms in public libraries uh, since the Carnegie era. Uh, so, um, but one important thing to recognize is that they are profoundly local institutions. Uh, nearly all of their funding comes from either municipal or county sources. Um, and what that means is that public libraries are, are relatively free to do um, what they want uh, within their local jurisdictions without having to ask uh, or seek permission from anyone at the state or national level. So very local institutions found in pretty much every community across the country. Uh, they're also beloved, well-used institutions. Um, and so Gallup actually found that in 2019, uh, more Americans went to libraries than went to the movies. Um, we all can stream our things on Netflix or Hulu or whatnot, uh, but uh, you can't find social connection uh, in the same way that you can at a public library. And in our uh, kind of digital world, um, what libraries offer has expanded. Um, and, but uh, one, one constant is that librarians are seen as uh, trusted institutions, trusted pillars of communities. Um, a Pew Research Center study actually found that local public libraries or librarians are about as trusted as healthcare providers. Um, uh, and so they tend to be seen as a good public investment um, and one to certainly take advantage of for anyone interested in promoting healthy aging. Uh, they're also quickly becoming multi-purpose community centers. Um, an American Library Association uh, survey from 2018 uh, say that found that more voters today say it's important for the library to be a community hub uh, by offering things like activities and entertainment not found elsewhere, as well as being a good place for people to gather and socialize, um, a point that we'll come back to a little bit later in today's presentation. And what does that look like? What does it look for look like for a public library to offer activities and entertainment not found elsewhere? Oh. Well, according to the American Library Association's 2020 annual report, um, libraries provide a diverse array of health literacy and awareness services for their communities. Uh, and some libraries have taken healthy lifestyle services even further by offering walking, hiking, bicycling, or running programs that take place outside the library building, while nearly 23% of public libraries host fitness or yoga classes. Um, and libraries also have uh, or tend to have superior technical abilities. Um, and, and one obvious way to point that out, um, uh, within weeks of COVID-19 uh, coming to the U.S. and the shelter in place ordinances going into a place, uh, literally within weeks, over half of the public libraries across the country reported that they had started adding virtual programming. Uh, so public libraries were relatively quicker, and I, I would say quicker than other institutions like senior centers, um, pretty easy, able uh, to quickly transition face-to-face -face programming into virtual programming, um, uh, again, based on their superior technical capabilities. 
and librarians care about healthy aging. Um, so this is from the American Library Association's Health Literacy Toolkit. Uh, one of the messages is that librarians can lead you on the path to healthy aging. And they do so through various programs, uh, such as uh, I learned about earlier today uh, in a presentation featuring Torrance Public Library in California by offering uh, thing, classes like a matter of balance. Um, and to, to better understand how public libraries support um, healthy aging in this way, um, a few years ago, uh, I partnered with the National Institute on Aging's uh, Go for Life initiative uh, before that initiative ended um, uh, earlier this year um, on a study of how, 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 can, how can other agencies best partner with public libraries to offer exercise activities for older adults. Um, and we did this study because we know that these are what, when these programs exist, it's not librarians uh, developing things on their own. It's almost always dependent on some form of a partnership, uh, either with a local, regional, or in the case of our study, a national partner. Um, and so libraries from across the US and Canada responded to our call for information uh, about how they partner with others to offer exercise activities for older adults. Um, and you can access uh, the report on the NIA's website. Um, but I just want to highlight uh, one thing. Um, most of the respondents said that they had already partnered with others to offer exercise activities for older adults. Um, but among those who had not yet partnered, um, uh, nearly all said that they ideally would like to begin to partner with others to offer physical activity programming. So what that tells us is that already um, many public libraries are offering exercise activities for older adults uh, and many more uh, would like to do so um, if they were approached by a partner uh, with a potential program that they could do together. Um, and another study I did uh, a few years ago, um, we did a, a, a survey of public libraries in the US and Canada responded to by 1,157 public libraries. Um, and we found uh, that around 40% of public libraries in the US and Canada uh, reported offering physical activity programming of one sort or another for older adults. Um, and so again, uh, quite a lot already happening, uh, but um, uh, um, we found that these types of programs are much more common uh, in urban and suburban communities, uh, but they happen with a lot less frequency in rural communities where ironically, um, the need may be the greatest. Um, and so that's kind of what led to this project, which is really focusing on how do we extend access to opportunities uh, to engage in strength training among older adults in small and rural communities. Um, and just uh, just one other quick thing I wanted to mention. So I'm here in North Carolina, um, and with the assistance of the Piedmont Triad Regional Council's Area Agency on Aging, um, I was actually able to get some data on uh, the number of public libraries throughout the state that have offered a matter of balanced programming from 2015 to 2019. Uh, so during that four-year period, 15 public libraries throughout the state uh, offered a matter of balanced classes to um, 275 older adults. Um, and and the, that programming has been so successful uh, that in May of last year, um, a number of North Carolina librarians were actually trained uh, to be uh, a matter of balanced coaches. Um, so again, uh, no better testament to the fact that librarians are super interested in doing whatever they can do to promote healthy aging uh, in this way. And again, my thanks to the Piedmont Triad Regional Council Area Agency on Aging on being so forward thinking regarding the opportunities that can come from partnering with public libraries uh, in this way. Uh, but a balance is, of course, uh, vitally important, and false prevention is, of course, vitally important. But we also know that it's vitally important that older adults uh, both maintain uh, and extend um, their strengths uh, as they grow older. And that's really what, we're, what, we're, what we were interested in today. Um, and before I go into the study of what we did, um, I'm going to turn things over to my colleague, Ms. Fran Fisher, uh, founder of Jerry Fit Company, LLC who will introduce you to her work and how she got connected to public libraries. Uh, so Fran, do you wanna go ahead? 
Thanks, Dr. Ra. A lot of great information. It's exciting to see where this is all headed. Hello, everyone. My name is Fran Fisher, and I'm the program developer of the Jerry Fit Workout. We're very excited to meet everyone at the first National Council on Aging's virtual conference. I know that we've been attending this conference for the past five years, and I've gotten to know many of you through being able to work with you to bring the Jerry Fit program to your communities. But for some of you that aren't familiar with our evidence-based health promotion program, I'd like to tell you a little bit about our company. When we started JerryFit 26 years ago, it was a first in many ways. In a time when high impact aerobics was the thing that everybody did, we instead focused on developing a non-impact strength training program specifically designed for older adults that helped them build strength increase their range of motion, improve balance, and more. Today, we have over 250 locations throughout the United States that are offering the Jerry Fit program through either instructor-led classes that are held at senior centers, park and recreation departments, community centers, libraries, and congregate meal sites, or virtually led classes by way of DVD. As Noah spoke earlier, the Matter of Balance program is one of the best fall prevention programs, in my opinion, that's ever been created. It has made people aware of what they need to do in order to prevent a fall and exercises that should be adhered to in order to keep them strong. However, when that eight-week course is up, what happens? Enrolling in an ongoing Jerry Fit class is a way to keep them engaged in their health and on track so that they can continue to build strength which will naturally help to improve their balance. Next slide, please. Another evidence-based program that has become very popular and effective is Walk With Ease. It's an easy program to follow and it's excellent as a chronic disease self-management support program. But you still need to add that strength training compound and need to strength component, excuse me, and need to work out with weights and build muscles if you wanna live a long life. However, right now, only 10% of our nation's seniors are working out with weights. Walking still remains the number one chosen form of exercise. But think of how much more vim and vigor you'd have in your step if you added a little strength training two or three times a week. Next slide, please. As we age, we naturally lose muscle at the rate of about one pound a year as soon as we reach the age of 50. But something even worse begins once we reach the age of 70. We begin to lose two pounds of muscle each year. And this can really add up over time. That's why we need to be involved in a progressive resistance strength training program that can help build back what Mother Nature has taken away. Next slide, please. So one of the things that we want to focus on today is collaboration. I met Dr. Lenstra through the National Institute of Health Go for Life program in the summer of 2018. Very early on, we both shared a common interest to bring physical fitness programs to libraries. I proposed the idea of him doing a program virtually through the use of three Jerry Fit DVDs that were rotated during the 12 week duration. I was interested in testing our Jerry Fit product line actual Jerry Fit evidence-based lesson plans that were filmed live at some of our senior centers. Dr. Lenstra offered his networking capabilities and Zoom meeting presentation skills. And the next thing you know, we arranged a conference call with libraries across the nation and asked them to become hosting sites for the study. To our surprise, the libraries were very interested in trying this out. We had over 800 people sign up for virtual Jerry Fit classes that were to begin at libraries starting the second week in January 2019, which also happened to coincide with the worst winter in U.S. history. Yeah, it might not have been the best time of the year to start a study with record snowfall and ice storms, but it was as good a time as any. Of the 800 participants that signed up for the Jerry Fit virtual classes, 535 participants completed the 24 class 12 week study that was held at 49 libraries throughout the United States. Next slide, please. We tried to make everything as easy as possible. 
We supplied the sign-up forms, the posters, the flyers, the handouts, the surveys, and even a prepared press release that could be tailored to send to a local newspaper or used in a monthly newsletter or a TV or radio spot as a public service announcement or other media. Many of the libraries like West Point Library in Iowa received a lot of coverage and people soon became aware that this free program was available to them. Next slide, please. And here they are working out to the DVDs. They really loved the Jerry Fit program and saw results, which was the main thing we were hoping for. But could a virtually led class produce the same or near the same results as a live instructor led class? Noah, I'm gonna let you take it from here. Great, uh, thanks Fran. Uh, and I just wanna point out, uh, sometimes people wanna know where the libraries held these classes. So you'll see uh, in the bottom left, um, they held it in a meeting room uh, and other libraries, they have open spaces that they can clear tables uh, to put the chairs in. So even in, in small and rural libraries, um, there tends to be some public space available. Um, and again, um, with that technical capability, uh, it was very much within library's wheelhouse to get the technology set up so that, uh, that there was no issue getting the DVDs uh, going. Um, and keeping track of that, uh, keeping track of all the paperwork, uh, librarians really excel in th that type of um, administrative minutia. Um, so uh, had no problem getting all, we never visited any of these sites in person. Uh, it was handled completely um, through technology, through email, through video calls. Um, and so we really utilized new technology to make, make this uh, nationwide uh, initiative happen. Um, on, on essentially no money. We had no external funding to make this happen. Uh, we just did it um, because we thought it needed to be done and, and it's, it was really that simple. Um, and so uh, in any case, uh, and we were very interested in reaching communities that would otherwise not have access to these types of programs. Um, and in fact, most of the study participants uh, came from communities with fewer than 5,000 residents. Um, um, as you see here, 40% um, um, uh, of participants came from, um, or um, excuse me, 24% came from very small communities. Uh, that's communities that have less than 1,000 residents, 40% uh, from small communities between 1 to 5,000 residents, 16% um, from medium, what we call medium sized communities, 5,000 to 10,000 residents. Um, and 20% came from larger communities, uh, greater than 10,000, uh, but no community had more than 100,000 residents. Uh, and uh, happy to talk more about who participated in this study, but for now, I wanna turn to the results of the study so that we can then uh, talk about them. And really, we found this, this program had positive impacts on physical, mental and social health. Um, and if you want to access the full results, uh, you can uh, access them at this link. Uh, and if you don't have time to write it down, uh, please email me later and I will be happy to share it. Um, and so uh, at the, uh, again, at the end of the 12 week classes, we had older adults uh, complete a three page uh, print survey um, that librarians then uh, compiled, uh, gathered together all those print surveys um, and sent them to Fran, who in turn sent them to me at UNCG and working with the graduate student assistant, uh, we entered all of the data um, into uh, data management systems uh, to analyze and, and to see what the results were uh, of having this program be available. Um, and unsurprisingly, given the fact that Jerry fed to the program focused on, on building strength among older adults, um, uh, the, the most commonly reported positive result was strength. Um, most older adults who completed the 12 weeks said that their strength had improved as a result. Um, but interestingly, the second uh, most commonly reported uh, thing that had improved was well-being, um, which is kind of a general concept, uh, but uh, as I'll get to in a minute, um, I think beyond the individual benefits of participating in a program like this, uh, there's a lot of social benefits. Older adults getting out of the house, uh, seeing friends, meeting new friends, uh, engaging with libraries, really engaging with the public library is a trusted community space. Um, uh, also positive results for physical activity, um, increasing balance, uh, increasing ability to stand up, 
um, increased energy, uh, increased overall health, um, climb stairs and walking. Uh, and again, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about the mental health impacts. Uh, the most commonly reported benefit of the program, in fact, nearly 93% uh, of the 535 older adults said that participating in Jerry Fed at the library had increased their spirits or mood. Um, so in other words, they simply felt better about life uh, as a result of having uh, participated in this. Um, and so again, I think that that really speaks to having a program like Jerry Fit and a safe, trusted uh, location like a library um, really impacts uh, the holistic person, uh, body and mind and spirit um, all, all, all together. Um, and, and also somewhat remarkably, we had at the end of the three page survey, an open ended space for uh, older adults if they wished uh, to tell us about other benefits of the program. Um, and remarkably 327 of the 535 older adults actually took the time to in some cases offer quite detailed uh, feedback about how the program had um, impacted them. Um, and uh, with my graduate assistant, we coded those open-ended responses. Um, and what we found is that the most commonly reported uh, other positive results uh, related to socialization. Again and again, we heard older adults talk about how valuable it was uh, to them to get out of the house and go to the library uh, and see and engage with their friends. Um, and again, in many of these communities, there is no senior center, there is no YMCA, there is no rec center. Um, a lot of the uh, infrastructure that you would expect to see um, in larger communities is almost completely uh, non-existent. Um, so much so that in, in some of the very small communities, so we, we had that newspaper clipping from West Point, Iowa, um, in a community needs assessment that the library had done uh, the previous year, they actually found um, that having a space for exercise uh, was one of the things that people most wanted to see at the library because that need, need was not being addressed elsewhere in the community. Um, uh, so, but it is a, it's a different type of exercise when you do it at a library because the library is such a social space uh, where people of all generations, all ages get together. Um, so we heard again and again how, how socializing um, both before, after, and during the program was one of the major benefits that, that participants reported. Um, as well, again, uh, with things having to do with strength and muscle tone, of course, given the, the focus of Jerry Fit on that, um, increased mobility, uh, increased uh, attitude, general well-being uh, towards life, um, balance, um, et cetera. Uh, and I just wanted to have a few excerpts of what these 327 older adults uh, reported. So um, a participant from Holbrook, Arizona said that Jerry Fit is an excellent program for health and well-being. I'm encouraged that I can do better and stop the downward spiral I've been in. Thanks to everyone who made this possible. A participant from Union, Iowa said it was a social time as well as a physical exercise time. We all need each other as well as physical time for our bodies. And a participant from Owensboro, Kentucky, uh, which was uh, the second largest community uh, that participated in the study, Owensboro is a city of about 20,000, uh, said, I feel better, have more energy, and stay motivated to exercise. Um, and based on the success of the program, when we asked uh, librarians uh, earlier this year before COVID-19, uh, if they continued to offer Jerry Fit at their libraries, at least 77% continue offering it. Um, and I, I should point out that as part of participating in this study, uh, one of the benefits to libraries is that Fran very generously offered to participating libraries um, public performance rights in perpetuity uh, to the entire Jerry Fit catalog. Um, and so a lot of these libraries have started to not only use the original three DVDs, but have started to add some of the more advanced content that Fran has available. Um, and so we see uh, the libraries uh, reported that this really struck a nerve in their communities um, and the vast majority uh, continue to offer it. Um, and in the context of COVID-19, um, some have shifted to virtual programming, which in a minute I'll let Fran talk a, a bit more about, but I just wanted to include some quotes from librarians about what, the, what they saw as the benefits of the program. 
Uh, so Michelle Klinkerfeld uh, at the Bondurant Community Library said, we are still going with classes. Our numbers have grown. Our original, our, our original members are great at helping new members and the best advertisement is word of mouth. Uh, Meg Polly, the director of the Whitting Public Library said, the group is so lighthearted. When the DVD says, put your exercise band around the foot of your choice, meaning either your right or your left foot, uh, one lady said to her neighbor, I'll put it around your foot, um, and everyone laughed. So again, um, uh, a very lively, very socially engaged uh, time for everyone. So, oh, sorry, actually, before I get into this, uh, Fran, uh, did you want to say a little bit about the, the shift of virtual programming and how Jerry Fett has kind of adapted in the context of COVID-19? Uh, yes, we, we've, um, we generously donated free online workouts to our licensed site, not just the libraries, but to all licensed sites, so that the people that were previously enrolled in the Jerry Fett program before the national shutdown, they were given the opportunity to continue taking Jerry Fit, but online through their own computer, phone, or TV. All they really needed was a username and a password on our website at jerryfit.com. And uh, we provided them with the uh, videos that we have available for older adults. It's worked out really well. Uh, they've stuck with it. We've gotten a lot of great letters and phone calls and I'm very happy when uh, you know, people say you're doing a good job. It feels great. Great. Yeah, that's great to hear, Fran, um, and, and really wonderful, and again, very generous of you. And, and I, I would just say Fran and the libraries uh, have really developed a wonderful rapport working together. Um, and so I think uh, it's, it's been great to see kind of um, Fran and her expertise in, in strength training and, 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 um, and older adult physical fitness uh, be developing this wonderful partnership with libraries across the country. Um, and, and Fran uh, has even gotten more libraries beyond the study. Uh, Fran has gone to the Association for Rural and Small Libraries um, and has gotten even more libraries to uh, participate in this uh, initiative um, even beyond the initial uh, 49. So it's, it's, it's amazing to see. Um, but uh, uh, not all of you uh, may be particularly interested in, in Jerry Fit, uh, although I think you should be, um, but some of you may be interested in just more generally how you can partner with your public library um, to do things uh, related to increasing health among older adults. Um, and here's really what we learned. Um, uh, the first and most important thing is to reach out to your local library. You can't do anything together if you don't know them and if they don't know you. Um, and so starting with uh, building relationships is the most important thing. And, uh, and that can be done over the phone, over the email, um, or in person um, if, if uh, that's an option at this point. Um, and after you reach out, find out what they're already doing. Uh, you may be surprised uh, to find uh, that your library is one of the 25% across the country that are already offering uh, fitness classes, um, which may be off targeted towards older adults. Um, so find out what they're already doing. Um, find a champion of healthy aging in your library. Uh, and again, given all this national focus on how libraries support healthy aging, uh, you may again be, be surprised to find that there's someone uh, super passionate about this. Um, in addition to physical activity uh, related initiatives, um, there's an incredible uh, amount of energy right now around uh, dementia friendly libraries. Uh, I was at the Public Library Association conference um, at the end of February and I think there was at least three uh, different sessions about how, how, to, how to foster and sustain dementia friendly libraries um, through memory cafes and so much more. Um, so you, you probably will be able to find a champion of, health, of healthy aging. Um, who you can invite to one of your meetings uh, and propose a collaboration. Uh, so Fran and I, uh, we really put our heads together um, to think about what, what, what sort of collaboration could we propose to America's libraries. Um, so uh, uh, you and your local community or with your regional or national partners could uh, put your heads together and think about what you could do um, based on uh, your mission and goals um, and the library's mission and goals. Um, then work together to bring that idea to reality. Uh, share with others what you're doing. Um, 
uh, both uh, um, in, in your, your sector and also in the library sector. Um, and finally, repeat, don't let the relationship drop. Um, you may find that it goes in directions uh, that you hadn't anticipated. Um, here in North Carolina, uh, when the Piedmont Triad Regional Council Area Agency on Aging started doing a matter of balance classes uh, in public libraries, they did not anticipate that librarians would actually like to become certified matter of balance uh, coaches. And yet that's exactly what happened. Um, but that, that type of thing doesn't happen unless you uh, commit to the long term and really think about how, how you can sustain uh, and foster and grow your relationship with local librarians. Um, and so, uh, and Fran, did you have anything you wanted to add about this from, from your perspective? Yes, uh, you know, we do take a lot of questions from would-be uh, people that are interested in signing up for the program. And sometimes we do find that there are a select few people that just will really never set one foot in their local senior center for anything. They just have a stigma still relation, related to their local senior center. But this seems to disappear when a library is brought into play. And, and people just seem to want to go to libraries a lot more. It's more readily available. It's a place to hang out. It's very cool to be a library right now. So we found that uh, some people that just were really opposed to taking classes at a senior center now have this ability to go to the friendly local library and and uh, take a program as well. Yes, excellent point, Fran. Um, absolutely, I think that approachability um, is, is absolutely uh, a vital thing to emphasize. Um, and really, at that point, uh, we're, we're well ahead of schedule. Um, and so we have plenty of time for question and answer uh, and discussion. So I'm very mm -hmm. eager and excited to hear uh, your thoughts and reactions and, and looking forward to, to discussing this all with you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Noah, I did want to add one thing. Um, you did have in your last point, I kind of took it the wrong way, but just because a program doesn't work out the first time you offer it, mm -hmm. Try it again. It mm -hmm. could have been the time of the year, the day or time. A lot of different variables go into why people don't sign up. Mm -hmm. um, we're a firm believer in using marketing materials to help attract people to evidence-based programs. People need to know that they're available and you need to advertise them. I don't mean taking out ads in newspapers, but I mean to market them on social media, uh, uh, send a press release via email along with a photo, they love a photo, to your local newspapers and get some media coverage on the events that you're doing at your senior centers, libraries, community centers, parks and recreation departments, wherever you're offering these evidence-based programs. You want to assure a good turnout. And then my number one rule for instructors that teach evidence-based program is if somebody hasn't been in class two or more times, get on the phone and give them a call. Sometimes they really pre appreciate the reinforcement that you're giving them, knowing them, knowing that they, somebody cares about them enough to call to make sure that they're all right, or to see if there was a barrier to have, not having them come back to class. We wanna make sure that we always have good attendance. So there's a lot of good things that you can do in order to still be engaged to your people that take class because at the end of result, you want completers with these evidence-based programs. You want people that you will know that will be improving their lives, helping them to live longer, keeping them from falling, managing their chronic disease. I could go on and on and on, but we definitely need people to come to class. That's the main thing. So that's my two cents. <laughs> so Noah, um, I, I'm happy to jump in and, and um, ask the questions of you guys. There sure. was. Right. There was one uh, that uh, Fran actually already answered, but I just wanted to read it out in case other people had the same question. Did you provide the equipment as well, the weights? And Fran yeah. answered, no, people bought, brought their own, some libraries furnished weights. Yes. Okay, I see. Especially with like the COVID-19 thing right now, I think, you know, whenever I've taught a Jerry Fick class, I've been teaching classes for almost 40 years now, People always brought their own weights. They put them in a tote bag along with their stretch band and water bottle, and they place it in their back seat of their car or their trunk so that they always had it. Uh, with facilities that are furnishing these these equipment, there's going to be some uh, cleaning involved, sanitizing, and things like that. That'll be very time consuming, especially for your staff. That's why I always say 
I, I kind of don't advocate the use of community weights and bands. I like people to bring their own equipment to class. I think it makes more sense. All right, uh, there was, um, are all variables were measured with a subjective questionnaire, no physical testing? Yeah, um, yeah, that's correct. Um, and I, I responded. So again, we had no external funding for this project. Uh, it was really uh, just my time and Fran's time. Um, and so we, we certainly didn't have any money that would be required to go to all of these sites and do physical testing. Um, but I think that's absolutely vital and necessary. Um, and I think uh, to, to be able to get to that point to do uh, like an R01 uh, NIH uh, study of that magnitude, uh, we first need to raise awareness of, of how public libraries are getting involved in physical activity promotion. So uh, I describe this as a proof of concept study. Um, and the concept that we've proved is that public libraries are and do support physical activity. Now, to what extent that happens in, in kind of a rigorous quantitative sense remains unknown uh, to a certain extent, um, although I think we've produced some good data. Um, uh, but for those of you who are research minded, we certainly invite you to uh, begin to do the research necessary to more rigorously evaluate um, how physical activity promotion uh, takes place in a public library context. Uh, so we had, and do participants keep the weights to practice at home? Oh, yes, we strongly encourage uh, them to exercise on the weekends. Our, the goal of our program is to start them out two times a week and hopefully they'll recognize that that magic third workout a week that they do preferably on the weekends is going to accelerate the muscular strength and improve everything that's been going on um, much more so than just two times a week. All right, do you have a toolkit, template, or any resources on how you propose the program to a library? Yeah, yeah, we do. So I'll just go back, um, and in fact, I just uh, put the link in, uh, but I'll put it here as well in case people want to grab it. So again, uh, I actually work with the National Institute on Aging to put together this partnering with public libraries um, to offer exercise activities for older adults toolkit. So, it's available on the NIA website uh, based on feedback from librarians uh, across the country uh, and even in Canada. So absolutely uh, would encourage uh, this resource. Yeah, maybe Noah, maybe you can post that in the chat as well. Okay, yeah, I'll put it in the chat as well, yeah. And then uh, do libraries get a free license or do they pay for it? If an agency and library partner, who gets the license or do both partners share it? Uh, we have different plans for different licenses. For this proof of concept study that we did, this was for, our, for DVD led virtual classes. So they required a TV and a DVD player or a large screen TV. Um, that's a different type of license when you're just playing DVDs for group fitness versus having a live instructor leading the class, which is a more expensive license that a facility like a senior center would purchase to have Jerry Fit live classes offered at their location. Okay, one person asked, is this classified as an evidence-based program? Yes, we are on the Title 3D uh, grid cost chart uh, as one of the top tier level 3D programs like Matter of Balance, Walk With Ease, Stepping On, uh, Enhanced Fitness, Fit and Strong. Yes, right. we are. And then how did you determine if, it, if a participant was safe for this level of exercise? If I may answer that question, yeah. uh, when we do the Jerry Fit classes, as well as the DVDs, we show every exercise in several different manners, like somebody that's brand new to this exercise that's never done it before, as well as how, is, how it would be done in an advanced level. So pretty much, uh, we started them off from scratch. They were new, many, many of these people were brand new to strength training. They had never done it at any time in their life. So this concept was new to them. We took them, you know, as if they had never done a squat or a lunge or an arm curl before. And the, this was explained on the DVDs that they did in the libraries, the twice a week class that we had for 45 minutes. So everybody started at the same level. If they were a little bit more advanced, they knew what to do. They could actually do more repetitions or they could bring heavier weights to class. But there was always a, a 
demonstration portion of, the, of each exercise given so that those that were new were able to keep up with the advanced people and not feel left out. Yeah, and I'll just uh, follow up on that. In addition to that, uh, we not, uh, most libraries uh, also uh, requested or required, in some cases, participants to sign a waiver of liability. Um, and in the course of signing that waiver of liability, uh, they were asked to reflect on, on their cap cap capacity to uh, engage in this program. So there was an element of kind of self-selection um, as being prepared for, for the program as well. Um, through that waiver form. Great. Um, if any, does anyone have any more questions? I see that Noah also posted a link to the slides. Thank you, Noah. That's great. Uh, as well as the link to NIA, uh, the toolkit. So I'm just, if anyone else has any more questions, we'll give everybody another 30 seconds. I know I'm going to go find out if my local library offers this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is kind of, and I'll just add, like, in the context of COVID, um, a lot of libraries are doing, obviously, um, virtual programming. So uh, you may be, you may find that they're doing uh, virtual yoga or Zumba. Um, and and just uh, just in the context of some libraries starting to reopen, I saw the, the Oscos Public Library in, in Wisconsin um, has actually started to do Zumba in the library parking lot um, because it's safer to do Zumba in a space like the parking lot rather than inside the library. Um, so librarians, I will, I'm gonna go ahead and state are the most creative people on the planet. Um, I'm, I would uh, I would be, I'd, I'd be willing to stand by. That's, that's the claim I will take to my grave. Um, and so if you want to do something in your community um, and you don't have a librarian involved in it, you are really missing out. Um, and that's, that's really the message that I, I'd like to end with if there's no other questions. <laughs> Librarians rock. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you both so much. This was really a great uh, session. I think everyone got a lot out of it. Um, and I just ask everyone to uh, please be sure to rate the session and the speakers on the mobile app and tweet about it on, on Twitter using the hashtag AgeAction. I think this is a really great, great session with a lot of good information that's very practical people can put into use uh, in their communities. So thanks so much to all of you, really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming. Thank you.